This video tells the story of the Melville family from 1850 to the present. It's based on genealogical research performed on behalf of Tudor Melville by Don Griffith. Enjoy. Thomas Alexander Melville was the second son of Robert and Ada. He was born April 4, 1885 in Richmond on the island of St. Vincent. He grew up with three siblings, Henry, Dora, and MacLeod. Thomas's mother, Ada, died in about 1895 when he was nine years old. He and his siblings were raised by their grandmother, Mopsy. Nothing is known about Thomas's younger years. The first record we have for him is when he immigrated to the United States in 1912. He was 26 years old and had traveled to New York aboard the SS Grenada. The passenger manifest showed that he was an unmarried shoemaker from Leu, St. Vincent. He listed his nearest relative as his father, Robert Melville, living in Leu. In 1921, before his second child was born, Thomas filed a declaration of intention to become an American citizen. These were sometimes called first papers, since they were the first forms to be completed by new immigrants in the naturalization process. After the immigrant had completed these forms and met the residency requirements, usually several years, the individual was able to submit his petition for naturalization. In August 1925, Thomas filed his petition for naturalization with the U.S. Southern District Court of New York, and on December 10, 1925, Thomas became a U.S. citizen. In the 1940 census, the family was still living at 204 West 131st Street. Thomas was an elevator operator, a job he'd been doing now for at least 20 years, and he continued to have rent-paying lodgers. The value of Thomas's home had appreciated and was now worth $17,000. 19-year-old Tudor had a job as a restaurant waiter, and the other children were still in school. In 1940, one of Thomas's neighbors was Ferdinand Morton, Mr. Morton was about the same age as Thomas and had lived for a year or two directly across the street. Ferdinand was a music composer, and while there's no way of knowing if he and Thomas were friends, it would be nice to think so, because Ferdinand was better known as Jelly Roll Morton of ragtime jazz fame. By late 1943, Tudor had been transferred to the Army Air Force and promoted to Staff Sergeant. He joined four enlisted men and four officers aboard a Boeing B-17 Flying Fortress. On August 4, 1944, Tudor's B-17 was part of a 35-plane bombing sortie headed to Germany. The flight plan called for them to fly out over the North Sea, turn southeast into Germany near Bremen, and from there go on to the target at Brandenburg. Almost immediately after they crossed the German coastline, their B-17 was struck by anti-aircraft flak. All nine crew members bailed out safely and were captured by German forces within a few hours. A map from the missing air crew report marks the spot where they went down. Records show that the men were transferred to the Dulag Luft camp near Frankfurt, Germany. This was a temporary prison camp for newly captured airmen who were processed, interrogated, and then transferred to permanent camps elsewhere in Germany. At the end of August, Tudor and several of his enlisted crewmates were transferred to Stalag Luft 4 near the modern-day city of Tehuf in northern Poland. Stalag Luft 4 was one of the largest camps and held thousands of enlisted airmen. The War Department undoubtedly informed Mary that her husband was missing in action. Later, in December 1944, New York newspapers published a list of POWs that included 63 local men, among them Tudor Melville. Conditions at Stalagluf 4 were generally bad within the camp, but the infamous Black March was even worse. On February 6, 1945, about 8,000 prisoners from Stalag Lut 4 began an 86-day forced march toward Stalag 11B in the west. 
The Russians were advancing and German commanders did not want the prisoners liberated. The Allied prisoners were forced to march hundreds of miles along a zigzagging path meant to avoid the advancing Red Army. Food and water were scarce and the men subsisted on as little as 700 calories a day. Pneumonia, diphtheria, typhus, trench foot tuberculosis and other diseases ran unchecked amongst the POWs. An estimated 1,500 men died on the Black March. In April 1945, the prisoners reached Dalag 11b, where many camps from the eastern part of Germany were being combined into one large camp. Army records show that Tudor was at Stalag 11b when the Allies arrived to liberate the camp. By May 1945, he was headed home. The story of Robert Melville and Ada Boddington's numerous and diverse descendants doesn't end here. There's still much to learn and discover, and brand new Melville stories are being written every day. From humble beginnings in the little island nation of St. Vincent, your family has thrived and multiplied in America. Melville's everywhere should be proud of what you and your ancestors have accomplished. This is your host, Don Griffith. It's been my pleasure to present this history to the Melville family. I want to thank Tudor Melville, Diane Waddell, and the whole family for providing information and photographs for this project.